about that southbound house mover right there? You got that radio on? Yeah, that was me in that little black car that just strolled past you. I was wondering if you don't mind me getting a couple of shots of you when the traffic kind of frees up there. Uh, that's fine. One more snake around this 18 and you just went around. People know me for uh, cruising around and uh, having conversations with big trucks as they roll down the road. Uh, you know, do you mind telling me about that truck you're rolling in right there? Sure. 1979, 359, standard hood. Uh, originally it came out with a 400 big cam. Got rid of that, put a B model cat, 13 speed, 336 rears. Nah, she does pretty good for what it is. Yeah, it seems like it caught my attention when you rolled by there. Uh, I saw the back of that sleeper there. It looked like uh, you got a pretty affectionate name for it. Yes, sir. Yeah, it, kind of a long story with that one. A friend of mine, she come up with it, and we just kind of stuck with it. It was a joke at first, and then it just kind of stuck, and that's where she was. All right, so now we got to hear the story. I don't remember the whole story of it, but anyway, she come out to... She always had people, I've always had people looking at it and stopping and asking about it. And every time she used a pilot car for me, she'd say, yeah, that's, that's that big nasty truck running around. And that's how it kind of just stuck. She made me the sticker and didn't believe I'd stick it on here. And I was like, hell, I don't care. So we stuck it on the back and been on there ever since. <laughs> Roger that. How long you been doing what you do there? I grew up in this industry. My old man's pulled houses for 40-something years, and uh, I kind of got into it when I was younger, and I've been doing it now for going on, though, about seven years or now, so. And nothing like uh, following in our old uh, old man's footsteps. Uh, what, uh, what, area, what area are you from? I'm from Tennessee, but we pull out of northern Indiana. I'm just down here doing a, doing a favor for my old man. His truck's down in the shop, and he usually pulls these little houses, so I figured I'd take one and enjoy the sunshine for today, right? Yes, sir. You saying you yanked that thing all the way down from Tennessee? Yep. I run. I mainly run out west. I run Dakotas and Montana, Wyoming, Colorado a lot. Every once in a while I get down this way and it's kind of nice to get a break from everything. I hear you. Now, uh, does that fall into that tiny house category of things there? Uh, they consider this a park model. I don't know if they list it as a tiny house. It, I guess it is and it ain't. Uh, those tiny houses they build, they're normally eight wide. This thing's 12 wide. So how many miles does Big Nasty have on her? On the truck itself, no telling. It, uh, like I said, my old man bought it years ago, and then I got it from him, and this is actually the maiden voyage on a brand new motor. We just got done rebuilding it uh, just last week, actually, and she's doing all right now, so this is kind of the test of it before I start heading out west with big houses, right? I hear you. Well, I hope, uh, hope it goes well. Uh, where are you heading to with uh, what you carry in there? going just north of Miami with this one down there on the beach somewhere. Ah, uh, 10 for Well, you got a good ride. Hopefully we'll see some nice scenery down there, right? Yeah, I'm hoping so. So, uh, like I mentioned earlier, some, some guys are familiar with what I do. You know, I have these conversations going down the road. Uh, do you mind if I ask you a couple more questions here? That's fine. I'm pretty sure I'll probably follow you on Facebook, right? Yeah, the little big rig videos. Sir, I thought that's what it, who it was. I got a buddy out in Nebraska. You done one on him when he was going out to Reno and uh, Lee Forley, and you did his truck out there when he was building it. Uh, my name is Lee Forley. I'm out of Columbus, Nebraska. I'm driving a 1985 359 Peter build. It's got a B model cat in it with a five and a four two stick with uh, 370 rears in it. Oh yeah, yeah. Good old Lee. Yeah, that was a good trip. Uh, him and the rest of their guys there. I tell you what, I enjoyed that scenery. I didn't want to come back down here to Florida. 
hear you on that. I was actually supposed to go to that, and I was doing FEMA work out of California. We was on our way back, going to get another load. So when it comes to, to trucking and the time that you've been trucking for, what's been some of the, the best times that you've had out here? You know, it could have been a real cool load or uh, somewhere that you, you haul to. Uh, what, what you've enjoyed so far? I'd probably have to say when we do FEMA work, uh, we did a lot for the fires out there in California. We've done a lot for the floods down there in Louisiana and everything. And uh, we took a whole bunch of the man camps out there to California uh, whenever they had the big fire. And that was a pretty good run. We did a few of them out there. They didn't like me so much out there with me being as old a truck as I had. But one of those things with FEMA, you kind of get to do what you want. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And I had never, I had never drove up and over the grapevine and everything else by myself. I mean, I've been across with my father when I was younger, but that was my time to do it. And kind of enjoyed it. Something knocked off the list, right? So, uh, one of the things uh, I've been asking some of the guys out here, it kind of like gives, gives a, a pretty cool perspective on who we are and what we do. Because uh, sometimes we don't get to tell our story. But in this case, uh, you got the microphone there. So, uh, what's your claim to fame? You know, what do people know you for? Uh, they don't really know me for much. I just kind of stay to myself and do what I do. And like I said, I'm. They know everybody in this industry knows my father, so I kind of got that going. That's about it. And everybody knows him, and then they know me just because of that, right? Uh, nothing too wrong with that. Hey, good morning, Chris. Nice interview, man. You guys be safe. Our one is clear. Thank you, sir. Was that you and that old blue freight liner going north? Yeah, that's me, buddy. I tell you what, you keep her looking clean, man. I hope to come across you one of these days, going in the same direction. Yes, sir. I hope we put that, too. Be safe. So, I might as well ask you, you know, who, who are we talking to? You know, your first name there. They call me, my name's Christopher. Most people call me Chris, or Christopher doesn't matter to me. Well, I tell you what, that's a good name you got there. Uh, you know, all Chris's, they're, uh, they're pretty stand-up individuals. Uh, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta speak for my name, for myself, cause just because my name is Chris. But well, pleasure to meet you there, sir. I get you, sir. So when it comes to doing the job that you do, you know, what, what kind of person does it take to do the job? You gotta have a, a little bit of patience for doing what we do with oversize, cause everybody kinda don't like us out here for the most part. You know, they think we're in everybody's way, but we're just kinda doing the same job everybody else is doing. Just we're just a little bit bigger, a little bit longer, a little bit heavier. I hear you. So patience is key. Yeah, sometimes it, it's better than most, but other days, you know, running to the big cities, you know, especially Chicago, Atlanta, stuff like that, it, it can be a pain, but a little bit of patience goes a long way, and, you know, common sense, which there's not much of that out here anymore. Yeah, I hear you on that. So another question I like that I like to ask guys is, uh, since you've been out here, uh, what are some important lessons that you've learned? You know, lessons that maybe you know somebody else can learn from or uh, can benefit from. Uh, the biggest lesson would probably go back to what I just said a second ago: patience. That's that's one thing. When I was younger, I was nowhere near as patient as I am now, and that's one of the biggest things I've come up with is just you know. You kind of just got to let everything just ride, you know, don't take something too seriously and just 
ride along with the day, enjoy the day. You're here, you're not six feet under, so it's a good day. That's a great way to look at that. Yeah, for all now. So if a guy wanted to kind of change up what he's doing, he's been hauling a van trailer or a flatbed or something, and he looks over there and sees you yanking a house around, going around and doing all sorts of stuff with oversize, uh, uh, what kind of advice can you give him? You know, you mentioned about patience, but what else uh, can you say about you know, doing that that particular facet of wanting to pull houses and stuff? Pulling, pulling mobile homes is kind of its own breed on its own, kind of like, you know, with everybody else, the steel haulers and, you know, freight boxes and everything else. Houses is, houses is on its own. You kind of got to either know somebody or you got to find somebody that will give you a chance to, to start out because, I mean, it's a whole different breed from normal driving. I mean, you know, they don't pull the same. They don't act the same. You got to get used to, you know, different wind, you know, weather conditions, all that changes with each house depending on if it's a big house, little house, heavy, you know, if it's light, like these little things, they won't take, they won't take the wind like a big house will, and just a few other things like that. You just kind of got to, once you get in it, you'll love it, and you'll never get out of it. So give us some scenarios on what you've encountered. I'll tell you about the, about the worst one I've ever been into. Me and another driver, we had a double wide going up into North Dakota in the uh, middle of summer and took off from a truck stop. Sunny day, nice just like it is today here and riding across there and all of a sudden a storm come up out of nowhere. We ended up having winds over 70 mile an hour gusts and uh, little tricks of the trade. You block the interstate, put both houses together, and just creep along about five, seven mile an hour just so they don't blow over. And that's one of the little things if you get in high wind and you got somebody with you, you can kind of put them together, a little more wind resistant. Uh, did you do that so you can get to the, the, the I guess, the safest exit, or uh, how'd that work out? Yeah, we made it up to the next exit there and got off and hit the truck stop and waited the storm out. Where, where does that thought come from, you know? Uh, I don't want to pretend like I know where those particular uh, parts of experience comes from? A lot of them come in from experience from the old man, you know, watching and learning and doing stuff the old way that, that I was taught when I was a kid. And that just kind of, the other driver I normally run with that pulls the other half of the house I normally pull, uh, his father the same way mine is. They've been doing it for 40 something years. and. So we kind of we kind of been doing this since we was in diapers, running around changing flat tires for them all the time. Yeah, uh, that's awesome. So I've always been curious about those trailer tires. I'm having a look at them now. Uh, what's the rating on those things, and you know how much of a problem do they give you when you're doing what you do? Uh, depends on the house with that. Uh, some houses you don't have any issues. You can run 1,000, 1,200 miles and never have a problem. Other times you can run 300 miles and eat tires up like crazy. It, the house and the axles and all that varies into how good they do going down the road. But for the most part, they're the same since they were in the 70s, so they really haven't changed much. So they just, it works and they've left it that way. Well, that's pretty interesting. So what's the, the, the pound rating on them, do you know? It varies. Um, you have low pros, you have standards, and then you have the oversized uh, heavy tires. I don't, uh, I think they're, I think they start out at like 3,500 a piece for the lows and then they go up from there. Uh, 10 for. 
All right, well, Chris, uh, you know, tell me your last name so I can reference you in the video and the name of the company, because I'm going to see if I can't hop off here on this next exit. Sure, last name is Banks, and uh, I'm leased to Mark's Trucking. And thanks for letting me jump on here and uh, tag along with you. I hope uh, your ride down to Miami goes great, and uh, we'll see you soon. Appreciate it, and this will be a new experience to knock off the bucket list. Yes, sir. And I hope you get to dip your toe in the water down there while you're at it. I'm going to try to. Well, you have a good day today and a better one tomorrow, good sir. Yes, sir. I sure will.